a lot of people ask me why I always choose the most difficult route. And I tend to ask them the question, why do you always assume I see two routes? Um, there's only one route for me, and that's the hard route, the route that I choose, the route that I am going to succeed in, regardless of the outcome that other people may think I'm going to achieve. There's only one end, end goal and outcome for me, and that's all the way or nothing at all. All the way or nothing at all. Today, we're talking about mental fortitude with Wes Grant, a man who some describe as the invincible man, has been through so much, and mental fortitude is exactly what this guy is an expert in. When I say he's been through so much, he has survived so many encounters with death, it is unimaginable, and that is exactly what we're gonna talk about today with Wes Grant. Today's video is sponsored by Mullingmurs.com, where you can now get the hardest worker in the room, hoodie vest, and so much more with the link in the description, where 100% of the profits go back into creating this content for free of charge. Let's talk with the invincible man, Wesley Grant, about mental fortitude. I'm your host, Jordan Mulligan. Let's jump into the video. The opportunity was presented to me by a recruiting team that came over to South Africa, um, initially on a golf tour. Um, and, and, and they were just handing out expression of interest forms as to, you know, if you, if you were interested in joining the Royal Marines, this is the route to, to take, this is what you need to do, and, you know, the rest is up to you. Um, I took that as another challenge, and I thought, well, that would be a great, you know, sort of string to my bow to, to, to add to my life sort of accomplishments and goals. And I've always wanted to be a military man. However, in South Africa, things were falling by the wayside as to um, the rank structures were, you know, not you weren't able to progress as best as you were back in the days. The discipline was falling away. Um, just the, the, the whole structure of the military wasn't as strong as it used to be. Um, so knowing that coming over to England um, to join the Royal Marines, the best fighting force in the world, and the longest and hardest NATO training in the world was that challenge that I decided to accept and embark upon. Um, in the process of doing that, I made a promise to myself. Um, as you say, it's coming over. Um, I had I sold everything off, um, cleared all my you know debts. I had just bought a brand new car and sorted everything out before leaving. Packed my bags and um, I realised I didn't really have much as a teenager growing up. Um, one bag on my back with some clothing items in and hundred pounds in my pocket. Came over to the UK knowing that my goal and my only goal was to join the Royal Marines. And I came over with the intention on doing it and there was no, no point of return for me. I had no exit strategy, no return ticket, no get out of jail free card. It was do or die. And that I think is what led me to pursue the career that I did and to adapt that state of mind that I did and the mental attitude, which was then, how can I say, uh, doubled, if not tripled, um, along the way within my military career. So embarking along that journey, I think was the best thing that I could have ever done. And um, it's, it's, it's opened up the world to opportunities that I've, I've head, taken head on. Um, a lot of people ask me, why I always choose the most difficult route. And I tend to ask them the question, why do you always assume I see two routes? Um, there's only one route for me, and that's the hard route, the route that I choose, the route that I am going to succeed in, regardless of the outcome that other people may think I'm gonna achieve. There's only one end, end goal and outcome for me, and that's all the way or nothing at all, so. In terms of the, the training that goes into being a commander, which goes on for a long period of time, um, and not most people that sign up don't actually get to the end. There's a big fallout rate. Can you recollect on any points of time in training that was really tough, like a really tough time, and what you did to kind of get yourself through it? Yeah, um, I I got injured very early stages of my um, Royal Marine training. I think it was week three, no, week five. I think it was. Um, where I went over on my ankle with a severe um, tendon rupture and, and strain to my um, ligaments uh, surrounding the ankle and the stability of it. 
so I couldn't progress w within the, um, that, the, the early stages of, of my training. Um, the backlash from that was I was overcompensating, so everything I was trying to do was putting more pressure on the opposite side of my body, and I encountered um, knee issues and, and problems. So with that problematic um, additive to it, it, it sort of put me in a dark slumber where I was in a holding company called Hunter Company, where it was injured recruits that were going through training at the time. Um, a lot of people landed up in that troop, and that was just due to the arduous training that we were put through. Um, during my time there, I had spoken to people through different stages of their training. Some were at the early stages, some in the middle, and some at the latter stages. And each person still had that one focus in mind. Pardon me. Um, and that was the ultimate wearing of that green beret at the end. And regardless of where they were, what their injury was, or how long they had been there for, they all still had that same goal. And I thought, well, it's a great goal to have, but that's not the only thing that we need, you know, is to, to get out there, achieve our green beret, and um, become a Royal Marine. But I think it was more so overcoming whatever it was holding you back, whether it be the injury, whether it be the mental block stopping you from progressing. And I think that's where my mindset, again, kicked up a gear from all the injuries that I had previously, um, the encounters that I had back in South Africa with the stabbing and the, the feet on fire. That's when I, uh, yeah, put it all into play and, and created that state of mind which I pursued and followed throughout my whole career. If somebody wanted to be a Royal Marines commander in terms of their character or their mindset, what were some of the attributes they would need to have? I'd say the strongest attribute that you would need is the mindset of a warrior, of an absolute lion, um, the toughest of the tough. And it's, it's only because your mind is what is gonna carry you through. It is the strongest muscle in your body. Um, <clears throat> you could take Marines, put them side by side. Not all of them look like me. Not all of them are six foot three, monstrous mass muscles on them. Um, we had some, you know, of my best friends half my size, half my weight, half my height, and the exact same capabilities at the end of it. We passed the exact same testing. So um, the standards never dropped. There was always a set criteria that you had to meet. And regardless of who they were or their physical um, look or shape, it was their mind that got them to that end goal. Thank you so much to Wes Grant for doing this with us. He has an unbelievable story. He has so many scrapes with death and he has survived so much. So I'm going to link his stuff down below and also the full interview and the other highlights that we've done that I think might be relevant are linked down below. Um, mental fortitude for me is one of the most important things for success. What are you able to cope with? What are you able to deal with? What pressures can you take? What pain can you take? How strong can you be in the face of adversity um, is incredibly important. And I think life will throw situations at you where you can test that. And for some people, that may not happen. You may not have to deal with heartache or pain or death. And that's when real character comes in because I think that's when you need to throw yourself under the bus. You need to put yourself in situations where it's painful, it's difficult, you need to use your mental fortitude. Go run a marathon, jump in an ice bath, do some crazy workout, um, get into an uncomfortable situation that you don't want to do. Like, Go um, spar somebody that you've never, you've never fought before or go speak in front of a thousand people. Do things that are difficult and develop mental fortitude by overcoming things that are difficult. Every single day you have an opportunity to put yourself in a difficult situation that is going to test yourself and create mental fortitude. And then sometimes in life, life will throw something at you, it hit you on the blind side and illness will hit, the death of a loved one will hit. Um, something will happen where you don't see it coming and you will have to have your mental fortitude tested. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't, but no matter what you do in life, you need to be able to develop your mental fortitude with situations that either happen to you or you go and make happen for yourself. It's very important. They are the people who become extremely successful. The people who have mental fortitude are the people who run these Fortune 500 companies, the billionaires, the millionaires, the extremely successful entrepreneurs, the best athletes in the world, they have what it takes up here, and it's why you need to develop it, and it's one of the strongest skills you could develop. 
Today's video was sponsored by MulliganBrothers.com, the best motivational clothing brand in the world, where you can now get the hardest work in the room hoodies, linked down below, where 100% of the profits go back into creating this content. Guys, thank you for watching. Go follow me on Instagram, at Jordan Mulligan Brother. Let me know what you want to hear next, what you want to see next, what interviews you want to see. Come say it, drop it in my inbox, and yeah, let's have a conversation. Have a blessed and productive day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.